All right, um, I think we are ready to start. Um, so good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am honored to welcome you all to this important roundtable discussion on the topic of um, contributing to the internet governance process, the key role of parliamentarians in shaping the digital space. I will be your on-site moderator and the beautiful Celine from um, the IGF Secretariat and Anja here from the IGF Secretariat will be assisting me um, here. So um, let's start. As the internet continues to evolve, um, the governance mechanism and processes surrounding it must also adapt the address emerging challenges and opportunities. So today we are joined by esteemed speakers connecting remotely. Some of them, unfortunately, they can't join because of other commitments. Um, but the remaining um, speakers will shed a light on the current and future internet governance process and the pivotal role of parliamentarians that play in shaping the digital um, landscape. So just before we move on with our discussion and before I start to introduce our wonderful speakers, please note that you can find a complete bio of each speaker from the Asia Pacific RIGF website. So we'll keep it so short so that we can allow more time for discussion. So let me introduce our wonderful speaker. So because Amandeep Gill is not, um, is he is here? Okay. All right. So fantastic. So first, our first speaker is Amandeep Gill um, from the UN Tech Envoy and the Secretary, um, Secretary, Secretary General. And our second speaker is uh, Waimin Kwa a senior governance and public administration officer in the Division for Public Institution and Digital Government, United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, UNDESA. And our third speaker will, be, will not be joining us today, but will be playing a video, um, a pre-recorded video. Um, Tijan Charlie Sa is a strategy and policy coordinator at ITU. Her area of expertise is in um, the WSIS uh, processes. Um, the fourth uh, speaker for us um, today is uh, Honorable Hazan Ha Inu, a parliamentarian standing committee for Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, chairperson of Bangladesh Internet Governance Forum, and um, also the president of Dal Jasad. And our final. Um, supposed to be our final uh, speaker for today. I was told she will not uh, make it for this discussion. So we'll keep it, uh, we'll, we'll have more time for, for discussion. So I would like also to remind all our speakers that um, we are giving you 10 minutes each for your uh, deliberation. So uh, for the first one, let's begin by understanding the landscape uh, of internet governance process. So as you are, uh, so for the, for the first speaker, Mr. Gill, um, we know that you are closely involved in the current work of uh, GDC preparation and next steps. Could you please uh, share with us some insight into the major ongoing processes and the key milestones that deserve our attention and um, how do these processes intersect and why do governments need to prepare for, for this kind of processes? And also please share some, um, some views on how can parliamentarians um, actively contribute to these processes. So over to you, Mr. Gill. Thank you very much, moderator, and uh, greetings to all those participating in this uh, Asia Pacific uh, track for parliamentarians on internet governance. I'm really honored and delighted to be with you today. Uh, and moderator, as you've guided us, uh, I will focus on some of these intersecting events, intersecting discussions that are coming up and why they matter to all stakeholders, including governments, and uh, what is the role of parliamentarians in making sure that we reach the right uh, outcomes. So the field of internet governance is... Uh, uh, decades old. It has uh, had a home in the UN for the last 20 years uh, when the working group on internet governance was set up uh, close to 20 years back. 
and the Geneva and Tunis meetings took place and the IGF, the Internet Governance Forum was set up in 2005. So we can look back at a 20 year long legacy of the multi-stakeholder governance of the internet, of management of the world information society so that um, it benefits everyone. I think when we meet in Kyoto for the next annual internet governance forum meeting in October, we can be proud of this legacy. We can celebrate this legacy and our agenda this year, um, which is about empowering all people, is very, very pertinent today as we move to uh, embrace universality in terms of internet access. It is still some distance away, but now this goal seems reachable uh, by the time the SDGs goals uh, finish their current um, framework in terms of timeline, so within the next seven years. Uh, and also at a time when the internet is moving in new directions, particularly with data and AI uh, becoming more mature uh, in terms of their applications, uh, also in terms of the concerns they raise, uh, there is greater policy attention on that today. So the forums we've created, the discussion tracks that we have are becoming even more important. Now, what's the conjunction of different discussions? Uh, a very critical discussion that's happening today is on the Global Digital Compact, as you highlighted, moderator. These deliberations um, started last year. And in fact, the last IGF in Addis Ababa was devoted to its agenda, was aligned with the themes of the Global Digital Compact, and that has benefited the process, which is ably led by Rwanda and Sweden. Open, inclusive, multi-stakeholder consultations have taken place on eight broad themes, and those themes included the important theme of digital connectivity, accelerating progress on the sustainable development goals, internet governance, obversely preventing the fragmentation of the internet, data protection, human rights online, the building of digital commons, uh, where everyone can enjoy inclusive, meaningful access to digital technologies and where uh, misuse and risks are uh, managed so that uh, the uh, commons are not polluted uh, for uh, the users that also included, these themes also included the theme of artificial intelligence, so governing artificial intelligence for uh, humanity. Now, we are at a junction where these discussions are poised to move into the next phase, which would be negotiations mm -hmm. on the Global Digital Compact proposed to be adopted at the summit of the future next year. So it's an important moment. Last year's IGF discussions were valuable. Now, as we move into the negotiation phase, I think we can be even more uh, sharp in terms of the uh, suggestions and um, ideas that we bring to that process. The Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, has um, put many ideas on the table uh, through his policy brief of May 2023. And in that policy brief, there are 11 major areas. So there are, of course, principles and approaches that are defined, but also concrete objectives and actions by all stakeholders to take forward those uh, objectives. Many of those 11 areas are aimed at strategic enabling of progress on the sustainable development goals by greater investments in digital public infrastructure, by greater alignment of efforts on digital public goods and digital public infrastructure by capacity building. And also a new target has been set up in terms of resources, $100 billion for enhancing connectivity and bringing the nearly 3 billion who are still offline into uh, the mainstream of access to internet. These ideas also include looking at 
some of the governance gaps there that are there, particularly on artificial intelligence. And that's why the Secretary General has proposed a multi-stakeholder global advisory body on AI that can look at the risks, the opportunities, map out the landscape, and come out with recommendations for governments who are struggling to strike the right balance between innovation and management of the risks, and sometimes struggling to understand what exactly the risks are uh, uh, and how the technology landscape is uh, moving. The Secretary General has also proposed uh, a review and follow-up mechanism on the Global Digital Compact. It's not only important to have a high ambition document, but also to follow up transparently, accountably, follow up on the uh, commitments and do so in a multi-stakeholder manner. This is the big lesson we've learned from the IGF experience that this works. So we need to continue with this model of uh, governance of digital uh, spaces. This review and follow-up me mechanism should complement the Internet Governance Forum's important role. And there, the newly appointed leadership panel of the IGF, uh, chaired by Vint Cerf, uh, with uh, uh, Maria Ressa as the vice chair, is making excellent progress. It is focusing on the theme of the internet we want, coming out with uh, a design process around what kind of principles, what kind of outcomes, what kind of uh, a commons we want through the uh, internet. And this process would reach uh, an interesting milestone at the Kyoto IGF. And I'm very much looking forward to the uh, meeting there and to meeting many of you in person. I see uh, colleagues from DESA, colleagues from the IGF Secretariat. They are working hard to prepare for the Kyoto meeting. And I just want to conclude by highlighting the role that parliamentarians can play in this process. Now, without a proper legislative framework, we cannot have the leap in connectivity that we need. Public sector, uh, the private sector, private companies need uh, a proper regulatory framework that allows them to invest money, uh, to build out the uh, internet infrastructure. Uh, we also need proper regulation for data protection so that data flows go up in volume so that there is more and inclusive participation in the digital economy. And for all those reasons, parliamentarians need to take the lead in terms of moving forward the legislative uh, agenda. They also need to look at emerging technologies, what lies beyond the horizon, artificial intelligence in particular. And I think there is scope for parliamentarians to learn from each other, to network across regions and learn from the experience of different legislative uh, uh, spaces, such as the work being done in the European Union on the AI Act, or the discussions that have taken place in the US Senate on the governance of AI, and also legislative work that's been undertaken in Brazil, in Chile, work that's uh, being undertaken in the ASEAN context among the 10 member states of the ASEAN. So there is a lot of learning in terms of the governance of emerging technologies and also uh, the management of the internet space so that online harms uh, are uh, avoided, abuse uh, is actively addressed and that uh, there is no overreach by the executive in terms of let's say internet shutdowns or uh, the uh, misuse uh, of digital platforms and services uh, by the private sector. So the legislators have an important enabling, balancing and facilitating role in terms of an open, free, secure and inclusive digital future. And allow me to conclude my remarks here. Again, thank you very much uh, and all the best for the rest of the proceedings. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Gill, for the comprehensive overview. You have given um, a very good um, outline and summary of the of the processes, internet governance processes, and especially on the the entire uh, from the beginning of this um, week, we've discussed so much on emerging technologies and the 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 and 
how AI plays in this, you know, uh, new um, digital world. And uh, it's good that you point out how we should take governing AI for humanity. So this is a very good point and um, very good to, to know that um, the leadership panel are doing a great job, uh, lead by Vincef. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll, because you'll be going um, in the next couple of minutes, I will just open the floor for a few questions from, from uh, participants on site and as well as um, those from online. If anyone have any questions for Mr. Gill? Okay, it seems like, um, yeah, I think Mr. Gill did a really good job in outlining everything uh, on the questions. Let's, um, thank you so much, Mr. Gill. Let's move on to our speaker number two, uh, Mr. Wamin Kwa. Um, setting uh, the stage by Mr. Gill, I think it's clear that these processes are um, interrelated and have far reaching implication. Uh, Mr. Kwa, would you please um, share with us or elaborate on how these processes intersect and why government, including parliamentarians, need to be prepared to engage with them? Over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, Excellencies, distinguished members of parliaments, um, Under Secretary General Amandir Gill, thank you for your opening and framing our discussion here. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of uh, United Nations Department of Economy and Social Affairs, in short, UNDESA, I am honored to join you here at this parliamentary roundtable at the Asia Pacific Regional IGF. As we know, parliaments are the places where legislation is developed, including those for the internet and the digital space. This is very much intertwined with our daily life. Indeed, parliamentarians are among the key actors in deciding our digital future. From the vantage point of UN DESA, I am pleased that APRI GF, like the global IGF, has emerged as a key platform where parliamentarians can exchange information and good practices and, and also interact with other stakeholder groups on pressing issues related to the use, the evolution, and the governance of digitalization and digital policies. UN DESA has been designated by the Secretary General to support the UN's convening role of the Internet Governance Forum since the inception of IGF itself in 2006, follow, uh, following the WISIS in its two phases in 2003 and 2005, as we just heard from USG Gear as well. And the UN headquarters, as also highlighted in the recent resolution 76 270, adopted by the General Assembly in June 2022. We also welcome the practice of including parliamentarians as members of national delegations to all major UN meetings and events, such as the annual high level political forum in July, and also invite member states to continue the engagement of parliamentarians in a more regular and also systematic manner. Here, I take the opportunity to invite parliamentarians and also other stakeholders to join your national delegation in the upcoming SDG Action Weekend and the SDG Summit from 16th of September here at the UN headquarters in New York. This will be is an important midpoint milestone uh, of the SDG as member states and stakeholders reflect on how we can accelerate the SDGs, since as uh, some of you may know that we are behind uh, in a number of the targets, the SDG targets. The UN also gives special emphasis to achieving gender balance, and we here call for more participation from among female parli parli parliamentarians. So thank you, uh, uh, mod Madam Moderator, for being uh, taking time off to, to join us here as the moderator. So that brings me to the theme of this roundtable on the key role of parliamentarians in shaping the digital space. That is not only timely, but also resonate well with today's digital trend. When decisions are made on how to develop, make available, and regulate digital technologies, understanding how technology works and what users need is essential. We need technologies to be human-centric, to enable the exercise of human rights fully, and to make people's lives easier. We also need technologies to be inclusive by default, 
and to be human-centric by default and not as an afterthought. But all these do not come by default. The internet is a great empowering tool, but it's also a complex ecosystem with emerging risks and challenges from misinformation, disinformation to all the privacy, safety and security concerns. And you also heard from USG Gear about uh, technology such as AI that promised to, to drive progress towards sustainable development, but it also raises many questions of trust, ethics, bias, just to name a few. So minimizing the risks associated with digitalization and ensuring that individuals and the society at large can enjoy the benefits in an inclusive, safe, and secure manner is our joint responsibility. So this call for action for, for all stakeholders, be them, be they, be companies, government, the broader technical community and users themselves. So of course, last but not the least, the, parliament, the, the parliamentarians. And as you also, again, you heard from uh, USG Gear, as highlighted in the proposed Global Digital Compact, also in the Secretary General Roadmap for Digital Cooperation and in our common agenda, strengthen digital cooperation among different stakeholder groups is the cornerstone of an open, free and secure digital future for all. Parliaments have an important role to play. We have seen in recent years an increasing trend of registration that are being put forth in national and regional parliaments, but some of which could be in, as in, in, in silos or, or, or disconnected approaches. And these cover issues such as privacy, cyber security, data protection, content policy, competition and consumer protection, and many more. At UN DESA, we believe it is important to have guidelines, rules, and regulations in place that are aimed to tackle risks associated with the emerging digital space and to govern the behavior or market uh, actors and to protect the rights of freedoms of individuals. We also believe it is important to ensure that these rules are indeed oriented towards the goal of a user-centric digital space while balancing the various rights at stake and providing a predictable environment for the private sector to operate. I do hope that the APR IGF parliamentary track here could inspire the discussion at the Global IGF, the 18th Internet Governance Forum that will be held in Kyoto on 8th to 12th of October, 2023. This exchange of views of different perspectives, as well as the sharing good practices and deepening the cooperation among parliamentarians and other stakeholders on digital policy issues is not only useful, but critical. UN DESA and IGF Secretary welcome parliamentarians and all participants to join us in person or remotely at the 18 IGF in Kyoto in October. And I trust you know how to reach out to Anya uh, from the IGF Secretary who is with you in the room in Brisbane, as well as Celine, uh, also from the IGF Secretariat, uh, but remotely, but this is very much behind the organization of this parliamentary track. I trust that the cooperation at the regional and global levels, as well as at the national levels, is essential for IGF and will continue in years to come. And this parliamentary track will be one of the annual hallmark of global annual IGF, uh, regional IGF, such as APAR IGF, and also to be extended to national IGF. I wish all of you a fruitful exchange and we look forward to you sharing the outcome of the APR IGF parliamentary track in Kyoto in October. Thank you. I'm handing the floor back to the moderator. Thank you very much, uh, Wamen. And um, you highlighted quite um, a number of good points, especially the, the importance of the role of parliamentarians in um, pushing you know, gender the agenda in interacting with other key stakeholders, shareholders of, um, of, of uh, a digital. And um, I will give it to um, my other moderators if they have any comments or you have any um, thing you want to add. Nothing for now. I think I'll, I want to add certainly after after these very interesting uh, inputs. But I do think we have Simone also who has joined us online. Okay, great. So we've got complete um, speakers now. We have all our five speakers joining online. So um, thank you so much, uh, Waimin, for the um, comprehensive overview of um, of your statements. Um, now we 
move on to uh, speaker number three, which I will ask the uh, technical team to play the video. Uh, we had a pre-recorded video from uh, Mr. Sa, who is unfortunately unable to join us this time. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to uh, everybody joining uh, today. Uh, thank you for inviting us to the IGF Parliamentary Track, uh, Asia Pacific Regional uh, IGF uh, Forum. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so um, I'd like to uh, take you through the uh, the plans and the history of the business process uh, in my allotted time. And uh, for that, I have prepared a presentation, which I would like to uh, share with all the honorable participants. Uh, here. Um, so basically, the presentation will focus on uh, the WISIS plus 20 uh, process and uh, the vision for it uh, beyond 2025. Um, so uh, as you are aware, WISIS is the UN process that involves the um, uh, more than 30 UN agencies. It's an existing multi-stakeholder digital cooperation uh, it's a great example of multi-stakeholder digital cooperation within UN agencies, and it has uh, been multi-stakeholder since its inception. So it includes governments, private sector, civil society, academia, and the technical community. And of course, your region of Asia Pacific has always been uh, one of the most active regions in the business process. So uh, the goal of the business process from the beginning has been to achieve a common vision, a desire and commitment to build a people-centric, inclusive and development-oriented information and knowledge societies where everyone can create, access, utilize and share information. So of course, all of this is still very, very relevant to the changing scenario and the fast adapting uh, technology uh, uh, that exists today. So just to quickly take you through the phases, uh, the uh, in 2003, uh, the first phase of this was held, the Geneva phase, where the Geneva Declaration of Principles and the Plan of Action was adopted. So you see those small icons in green, the um, WISIS action lines, as we call them famously, uh, WISIS action line C2 in ICT infrastructure, C5 is cybersecurity, C6 is enabling environment, and so on and so forth. And this is a very beautiful framework as different UN agencies, based on their mandate, implement the different action lines. So for example, UNESCO implements several action lines like on e-learning, uh, on science, and so on and so forth. UNDESA works with us on e-government, um, UNCTAD on uh, e-business, and WHO on e-health, and so on and so forth. And in 2005, uh, the Tunis phase, out of which also the IGF uh, was uh, born, uh, the Tunis Agenda uh, for Information Society um, was uh, adopted. Now, in 2015, uh, we had a WISIS plus 2010 review process, so 10 years of the WISIS uh, process. And uh, uh, also, um, uh, the uh, 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development was adopted. Um, so since 2015, we've been aligning the WISIS action lines with the Sustainable Development Goals to highlight the importance of uh, ICTs in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. Now, um, in the UNGA resolution, our mandate is still 2025. So we have initiated the WISIS Plus 20 review process. Different stakeholders are doing their own um, you know, um, assessment of the 20 years of what they've achieved, what are the challenges, and what are the opportunities um, that uh, remain since the Geneva Plan of Action. Now, one of the things we have been doing to implement the WISIS process is the WISIS Forum. The WISIS Forum is held every year. It's a multi-stakeholder digital cooperation platform. Um, it's held in Geneva, but we have more than 2,700 participants, uh, world, uh, physical, more than 5,000 um, participants uh, virtually, 
There are more than 250 sessions. It's an open forum. This time we also had a parliamentary uh, track. Uh, so we welcome you next year uh, to the uh, WSIS uh, Plus 20 high level event. That's what it's called next year. Uh, to join us, uh, we had 48, uh, 46 ministers, 50 ambassadors. Uh, we introduced a component for mayors, um, basically to highlight the uh, smart city element. The chairperson person uh, was the Minister of uh, Slovenia for WSIS Forum 2023. And the key outcomes, of course, was that uh, multi-stakeholders uh, consultations on WSIS Plus 20 took place. And the Global Digital Compact consultations also took place uh, uh, at the WSIS Forum. Uh, the ambassadors of Rwanda and Sweden were present out here and held uh, basically use the opportunity of the uh, great presence of private sector and civil society at the WSIS Forum uh, to uh, gather their inputs. Of course, also there was a discussion on the potential of space uh, for all as a driver for sustainable development. Now to very quickly go through what stakeholders and governments and uh, member states are thinking about the review process. Of course, it has to be multi-stakeholder. Uh, the vision would be to provide a framework, um, basically, um, on addressing opportunities and challenges posed by the current digital landscape, including on universal connectivity and sustainable digital transformation. Close collaboration, the key UN agencies currently which are implementing the WSIS uh, process are ITU, UNESCO, UNCSTD, UNDESA and other agencies. Uh, aim would be to develop, uh, of course, uh, uh, some uh, sort of agreed text on a vision of WSIS uh, beyond 2025. And we hope that this would ideally be endorsed at the high level meeting in the UNGA in 2025. Now, the way we look at the phases, so if you see that there is always joint branding on the top left of ITU, UNESCO, UNDP, UNCSTD and the UN, of course. Um, the phases would, of course, involve regional inputs. So UN SCAP for your region, we are working very closely with them. UNECA, UNESQA, all these business regional reviews are planned in September, October, November. Uh, of course, the 2023 SDG Summit is on the 18th and 19th of September. We are also organizing the um, SDG digital event on the 17th to highlight the importance of digital in achieving the SDGs. Uh, I will talk about it later. We have the Japan phase, as we call it. It's the IGF in October, 8th to 12th October. Uh, so WISIS will be ho holding a high level event in collaboration, of course, ITU in collaboration with uh, the Japanese government. Um, our former Secretary General, Mr. Utsumi, will be present there, the Minister of Japan, and uh, of course, our Secretary General. And uh, we are really looking forward to this high level discussion on WSIS Plus 20 uh, during the Japan phase. Uh, Geneva phase, uh, the WSIS Forum next year will be rebranded as the WSIS Plus 20 Forum high level event. It is hosted by Switzerland uh, and it will be held from the 27th to 31st of May. Uh, we look forward to welcoming all of you there. Uh, do uh, let us know if you are interested in more information. Then, of course, UNESCO would like to host uh, something as part of the WSIS Plus 20 preparatory process. Uh, they have, they're still deciding whether it would be in 2024 or 2025. Then we have the Summit of the Future, um, uh, basically uh, on the 22nd and 23rd of September, uh, which would uh, also, um, Ambassador Gill uh, must have spoken about it or will definitely speak about it, um, about the um, uh, GDC. Um, and of course, our interest is to align the entire uh, process with the GDC and to explore uh, all collaboration and cooperation between the two processes. Um, we were approached by Tunisia that, uh, you know, in 2025, we could uh, align with the famous uh, regional event, the ICT for all event with a special focus on WSIS plus 20. 
2025, we would have the VISIS Forum in May, and then the UNGA uh, VISIS Plus 20 high-level event in New York. So this is the kind of the timeline uh, for the um, uh, VISIS Plus 20 uh, preparatory process that we have been working in collaboration with different stakeholders uh, uh, to develop uh, this timeline. Now, the high-level event uh, next year, um, what, is, what will be the main purpose? We will review the progress of VISIS uh, over the 20 years, the implementation, uh, share knowledge and expertise, identify challenges, gaps, and highlight opportunities, and of course, uh, facilitate multi-stakeholder engagement. And like I mentioned, uh, we will definitely have a, a parliamentary uh, track and engagement. Uh, last year, we had, this year, we had several parliamentarians joining us virtually. There were uh, some who had joined us physically, but if you are interested, we could definitely do uh, something uh, together. Uh, the outcome of the event would be multi-stakeholder output that would uh, identify um, achievements, gaps, and opportunities in the business process. Now, just to uh, take you through a little bit, we just we had the ITU Council recently, and uh, the member states of ITU uh, they have emphasized on the importance of uh, business, the UN process and its role in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals or the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. So we revised the resolution. So member states revised the resolution 1332 and 1334, which gives a clear role and mandate on the overall review of the implementation of the outcomes uh, of the OVCs. Now, uh, we, uh, like I mentioned, uh, ITU, UNDP, uh, in collaboration with the UN system, uh, also in collaboration with uh, BCG as our knowledge uh, partner, we are organizing um, SDG Digital to highlight the importance of digital in achieving, accelerating the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, so the date is 17 September. If any of you will be um, uh, in the, attending the UNGA or will be present on the 17th of September, kindly do let us know so that we can uh, register you and you could be part uh, uh, of uh, our community on that day. Um, just to glamorize the event, we also organized the SDG Game Changers Award. Uh, so we have just finished uh, with the jury. The selection is over. Uh, the winners have been informed. Uh, so it was an incredible journey and an, uh, we received outstanding uh, results. Um, and the outcomes will be uh, shared on the 16th of September during a reception uh, for the SDG Digital. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I, this was the time I was given to give you an overview and a brief about the uh, VISIS process and some of our plans about uh, VISIS Plus 20. Uh, there is a generic uh, email address here, uh, or you could definitely contact me uh, through the Secretariat, uh, and I'll be very happy to respond to all your questions and look forward to receiving you in Geneva for the VISIS Plus 20 high level event. Thank you very much. Hello, ma'am. Yep. Hello. Thank you so much. Uh, we've got that very informative presentation from uh, Ms. Sar, and I think you um, overwhelmed with all the, the information provided, especially on the um, the the WISIS, uh, processes. Well, we um, we have to move ahead because I think the time is is running out. Uh, we are ahead, uh, going to our speaker number four, who is the Honorable um, Hassan Ha Inu. Um, as you know, um, as emphasized by previous speakers, uh, parliamentarians plays an important role in the, this journey of internet governance uh, processes. And as a member of uh, parliament and former minister of information and broadcasting for Bangladesh, can you please share your um, uh, views, especially from a regional perspective on these um, processes? Thank you. Mr. Inu? Oh, he's not there anymore? Okay. All right. Um, well, I hope um, 
our last speaker is is here. Let me see. Is Honorable Sumana here in, in the room? Okay, all right, thank you. I think we're gonna move on to our uh, final speaker, Honorable Sumana. Um, as highlighted by um, you know, previous speakers, as I said before, the importance of, um, of preparation. Um, I wanna dive deeper into the role of parliamentarians in shaping internet governance processes. Um, so can you share how can parliamentarians actively contribute to these uh, processes and ensure that their voices are heard? And also, could you please share with us a regional perspective on this as a member of parliament from Nepal? Over to you, uh, Honorable Sumana. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much. Um, early morning here. Um, so diving right into the topic, here are a couple of um, areas as a parliamentarian uh, from Nepal that is important. Um, and I believe it requires a global co cooperation. Uh, with the advent of internet, there is a, uh, there's a digital divide. As of now, we've got about 34% of Nepal connected to the internet through fiber optics, uh, which means the information, the resources, the knowledge that's available for a lot of um, lot of you all who are in developed countries is, or the 34% of Nepalese is not yet available to a large population of Nepal. So that's one of the first challenge um, I have, or we have uh, from developing countries. Uh, the second is with the advent of internet, uh, the, the obvious question is, with every technology, there are risks that come with it. Uh, some we cannot uh, ignore, and others we need to figure out how to mitigate. Uh, it, my mom's generation is a generation that's, who thinks it, whatever she sees um, in, in her screen is, um, is correct, is factually correct news. So there's a huge uh, problem that we need to tackle with fake news, um, or more importantly, as AI advances, uh, I am particularly concerned about deep fakes. And this is where I believe we need a global cooperation in terms of sharing knowledge, sharing technology, uh, and sharing know-how on how we tackle fake news that really crosses boundaries. Uh, the second area where I believe I need to focus on and I'm focusing on are um, some of the grooming activities that happens in the internet online space that requires a lot of monitoring um, as well. And finally, the thing that is going to be uh, a big challenge for Nepal um, that we need to uh, figure out how to tackle at a policy level is reskilling workforce. Right now, we've got a huge population of Nepal that work uh, abroad. And a lot of those jobs are going to be at risk uh, as the technology advances. So a big policy question for me uh, is primarily around how do I go about reskilling a huge population uh, that are very low skilled to exist in a very advanced um, space that a lot of countries are already going to be at the forefront. Um, so from where I see, I think there, there are, there are three or four key takeaway messages. First is um, we need to have more conversation with the parliamentarians to recognize the risks that come together with the advancement of technology in terms of like, you know, when we're talking about industrial revolution 4.0, how, how are we going to tackle? What are the knowledges we're gonna share across boundaries to uh, have this huge workforce adapt? Uh, the second uh, conversation we need to have cross boundary is what are the technology, uh, what are the policy, common policies we should work on to prevent fake news from spreading. Um, we still, I believe, do not have a content moderation team in the large platforms that operate in Nepal. So these are some of the policy dialogues we need to have across. 
it's very difficult to get really large um, social media platforms to listen to a, a country where they're not generating a huge amount of revenue from their global revenue stream. But if we can talk across um, across countries with other parliamentarians, then it becomes something that we can collectively con have conversation with on what kind of content moderation we need have um, to keep uh, people safe. Um, and finally, I think it's very important um, from a parliamentarian perspective to have this uh, network uh, probably starts off as a formal network, but then it moves on to informal network to have conversation about what are the upcoming threats um, and how can they uh, prevent the spread of uh, disinformation or misinformation cross borders. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you so much, um, Honorable Sumana. Um, thank you for all the comments, especially the, um, the key takeaways that you just um, mentioned, um, the importance of having more conversation with parliamentarians uh, to address the, the importance of emerging technologies that we have to have um, policies in place and should take across countries with other parliamentarians. And um, I think we still have quite good timing for, for, for questions. Now we are um, here opening the floor for questions and comment. Um, participant uh, joining virtually, you can actually type your questions on the chat um, box. And um, for those participants on site, you can raise your hand if you have a question. I'll open the floor for everyone. Do we have any question from, from online participant? Yes. I, I see there is a question from Kapil, Kapil actually a comment in the chat. Maybe if you would like to take the floor. I mean, I'm happy to read as well the question yes. if that helps. So Kapil, thank you very much for your question. I'll just read it to, for the record. Um, there's an observation sharing my experiences and user, especially in South Asia. Parliamentarian always willing to take initiative to further extend IGF ecosystem for citizens in particular. In India, we have digital public infrastructure, digital finance having 800 million people on board. Thank you for your comment. And there's another comment from uh, Kubodi. Would you like maybe to take the floor? I don't. I don't see that they would like to take the floor. But yeah. maybe since I'm, my mic is on, maybe I can just say Go a few ahead. words. I. Uh, I first of all I want to certainly thank all, all the um, speakers for very valuable inputs. Uh, and especially for some concrete proposals, how can we advance engagement of legislators into our multi-stakeholder dialogue mechanisms? And this is something we also discussed um, across the national and regional IGFs. And I'm very happy to share that we already are witnessing some really good practices of uh, concrete cooperation between legislative bodies and the multi-stakeholder um, communities which are organized around the IGF concepts at local levels. So one of the examples that I always like to mention uh, is um, the example of the Kenyan IGF. My colleague Barak that coordinates the Kenyan IGF uh, uh, shared the example of the way they cooperate with their national parliament in a way that upon demand they stand as um, advisors to the parliament. So for example, when there was a situation where they were dealing with uh, discussions related to regulating the use of drones, then they would reach out to the um, multi-stakeholder organizing team of the Kenyan IGF, just because it's an excess of um, knowledge coming from the technical community, from civil society, from the government, uh, and uh, certainly from the private sector as well. So maybe that could be a um, good practice to learn from across the, not just the national IGFs, I think the uh, onus here is also with the parliaments, 
because uh, these are complex technologies we are dealing with and they need to make informed decisions. And um, there are good resources in more than 100 countries now through the national IGFs, but also the regional IGFs uh, that they can draw upon. And then finally, my final point, and certainly would like to hear uh, what other colleagues think is, we discussed this also recently in June at the European IGF at Eurodic. So we had similar setup. There were some members of the European Parliament, especially present there. And we just discussed the way they could be engaged into the regional IGF processes as the meeting points of stakeholders coming from relatively vast regions uh, from different disciplines. Maybe that if there are ideas, that would be wonderful to hear. Uh, how could the, maybe the IGF become those um, points of um, consultations for parliaments before decisions are made? We've seen some examples of public consultations, for example, with the, um, AI, the EU AI Act. So they, they had some public consultations leading into the um, several instances of decisions. So perhaps those are also good practices where those types of consultations could be done in uh, cooperation with the regional IGFs. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anya. Um, do we have any uh, comments from the, from the panelists or response? Okay. Um, the floor is still open. We have, um, I think we have around eight minutes left. So um, floor is still open. If anyone on the on site wanna comment or question. I think the panelists did a very good job for this discussion. Uh, let me just wrap up on uh, if we don't have any, any questions from the floor. I think we, everybody's hungry now, it's lunchtime. Um, well, I think our uh, panelists have provided uh, invaluable insight into the ongoing internet governance processes and uh, the needs for governments to prepare and you know, active contribution from parliamentarians can actually make a change. And as we move forward, let's recognize that shaping the digital space is a collective effort and the engagement of parliamentarians is essential for fostering a digital world that benefits all. So ladies and gentlemen, I think, thank you so much for your um, thoughtful contribution, especially the panelists for doing a very good job, um, very informative discussions. Uh, let's continue to work together to ensure that the internet remains force for positive change and progress. I think this brings us to the end of our session today, but thank you so much, everyone, especially those uh, participating online. Thank you very much. Have a good day.